I'm a crush. And it comes. Welcome to Unsung, Pittsburgh's premier nonprofit news magazine show. I'm your host, Anthony Walker. In this episode, we've decided to come down to the point where apparently everything is happening. We have a concert across the river, we have parasailing at the point, and people just plain enjoying the fountain. Unsung is happy to take you to two special events this week. The Relay for Life, where we find out about a groundbreaking study you can take part of, and Animal Friends Liberation Day, because there's always a furry friend that needs a new home. But first, as always, let's take a look at what's happening with our area nonprofits. Unsung is pleased to share Mariah's story via Communities and Schools, or CISPAC. Mariah's story begins in the ninth grade. As a student at a large Pittsburgh public high school, Mariah admittedly only cared about friends and partying. She realized how easy it was to skip school and began to skip almost every day. At the start of her sophomore year, she had a GPA of less than a 1.0. Even when I did try, it felt hopeless. I felt there was no hope for school after I'd messed up so badly. I didn't even have a 1.0 as a grade point average. I ended up just never going back for the 11th grade. Mariah went an entire year without any schooling. She wanted to have a better life, but did not know how to get there. Thankfully, she found CISPAC. With CISPAC, I have learned motivation, determination, and anything is possible if you put your mind to it. They're all amazing teachers there. You can tell they actually care, and that means a lot. I went to school every day an hour early and was the last to leave most of the time. I soaked in as much information as possible, and I took advantage of every opportunity I could. I asked thousands of questions. I ended up getting straight A's all year with a 4.0 GPA. Mariah will graduate in June 2014. Her dream is to someday help children in a way similar to the way she was helped by CISPAC. Got a story of hope? Unsung is always interested in sharing it. And in other news, from Achieva via the Detroit Press, we learned the internet accessibility might be the next big civil rights issue. The U.S. Justice Department this year is expected to issue guidelines on how the Americans with Disabilities Act applies to websites. Recent lawsuits against companies such as Netflix and Target have brought the issue of online content accessibility to the forefront. Websites are the new frontier, said Brian G. Muse, a law partner with LeClaire Ryan in Williamsburg, Virginia. Lastly, congratulations to Bricolage Theatre Company, which scored the cover of American Theatre Magazine for their groundbreaking work. We invite you to check out the story on the address on your screen. Michael Sorg recently attended Relay for Life in Cranberry, Pennsylvania, and wanted to learn more about a groundbreaking cancer study you can take part of. He sits with Bobby Cherry for the story. Hi, I'm Bobby Terry, and I'm a 16-year volunteer with the American Cancer Society, uh, including its Relay for Life signature fundraising program. Um, Relay for Life occurs in more than 5,000 communities in the world, um, and there's about 30 that happen in the uh, greater Pittsburgh region, including Cranberry Township, where we just recently celebrated raising $1 million um, over a 10-year span for programs and research for the American Cancer Society. Its purpose is really to um, raise money for programs and, and research so that we can finish the fight against cancer. Um, Relay for Life started in 1985 in Tacoma, Washington, uh, where one man, Dr. Gordy Klatt, decided to uh, walk a track for 24 hours and, and thus Relay for Life was born. And it's an overnight event that includes a carnival type atmosphere where teams fundraise, they do games, um, they do all kinds of great events to, to keep people motivated and, and really to, to help us remember why we're there, um, to honor our loved ones who are fighting cancer and to remember the ones who, who have lost their, their battle and to keep them in memory um, with us throughout the entire event. The Cancer Prevention Study, it, its official title is Cancer Prevention Study 3. Predecessors um, are, were, were milestones in the fight against cancer. It, it's hard to believe, but at one time people didn't realize that um, smoking and lung cancer were connected until one of the cancer prevention studies. The events are 24 hours, but the planning, the setup and, and teardown is really a 30 hour time block. My friends question why in the world I'd want to stay up for that long. And I laugh and I think, you know, just come out and experience it and you'll, you'll understand why I do what I do and why I spend all year doing what I do because it's, uh, 
it's a it's a it's a diverse group of people who come together really from all walks of life to to celebrate and remember loved ones who have cancer and who have died uh, and it's it's so moving to to see the luminaria ceremony and to see the different events and how people really just come together for relay for life and for fighting back against cancer all in one effort to to finish the fight against cancer and the study is started in the early in the mid 2000s around 2006 and its target is 300,000 people across the country between the ages of 30 and 65 who would take part in the study um, and it's a it's a simple process I just did it in fact for the cranberry event um, it, it, it's it's uh, a little shot um, a needle rather for uh, to pull some blood and it's every two years or so um, the society will send um, a quick survey to see how you're doing to um, offer some questions on your health and over time over a 20-year period um, the goal is to decide to, to help decide um, what might cause cancer um, in this current study. I first got involved with the American Cancer Society 16 years ago um, when my grandmother was diagnosed with bladder cancer and following that my mom got involved with the local relay in Moon Township where I grew up and um, it sort of blossomed from there. She, she unfortunately um, never made it to a Relay for Life event. She died um, several months before um, the, the event we were joining and so, so I've, I've held her memory with me um, in the past 16 years that I've relayed. For people that are interested in getting involved with the cancer prevention study, it's actually wrapping up um, at the end of this year. So by December, they will close the study uh, period. And in the region, um, for folks who, who are interested in, in getting involved, there's a couple CPAS-3 studies taking place in Belmont County, Ohio, um, in later in August, August 24th and August 27th. Um, there are more study events happening in the fall here in the region uh, and they're happening all across the country. To find out more information, you can go to cancer.org slash CPS3 for all of the information and to pre-register for some of the sites. Relay for Life occurs in you know, several communities around the region. To find your local Relay for Life event, you can log on to relayforlife.org, uh, type in your zip code, and find the relay of your hometown. And if there isn't a relay in your hometown, it, it's a great time to um, start one and, and figure out you know, who in the community can get involved and, and help us finish the fight against cancer. Each year, Animal Friends gives dogs and cats and other shelters a new chance on life. It's called Liberation Day, and it's all about hope for some of our furry friends.
For the third straight year, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of the Laurel Region have launched an aggressive campaign to recruit quality mentors to work with at-risk youth in Westmoreland and Fayette counties. This year's theme seeks to use a creative twist to entice individuals to consider applying as volunteer mentors. The search is on for 100 everyday heroes. Release your inner hero, no cape required. The goal is to obtain 100 Big Brother Big Sister applications in a 100 day time frame. A public event will take place on August 14th from 5 to 9 p.m. at Roboco Japanese Steakhouse in Greensburg. Being a big can be a fun and rewarding experience. Just a trip to a local park or sharing a school lunch can change an a child's entire week. Big Brothers Big Sisters matches bigs with littles that have similar interests and hobbies. Therefore, these friendships have the possibility to grow into more meaningful relationships. So, let's start something together and change the lives of tomorrow. More information on how you can release your inner hero is available at bbbslr.org. Do you love comics? Well, so do we. Teens can come check out Contact, Carnegie Library's annual pop culture convention with a costume contest, movies, trivia, gaming, crafts, and more. Teens can learn to make their own comics at comic workshops. Adults and teens can join in on the Out of the Gutter graphic novel discussion group. To get more information on this and other summer programs going on at Carnegie Library, please visit carnegielibrary.org. You might have recognized story tags and Twitter handles after our stories. We invite you to continue the conversation by tagging the nonprofit or using the story tag on Twitter. You can get in touch with us on Twitter at PGH on video or hashtag unsung PGH. Thank you for watching Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org. And hey, as a reminder, we're on iTunes. You can get the audio and video versions for on the go. You got a nonprofit you think is cool, let us know why, and you might find yourself here on Unsung. You can email Christopher at whitlatchc at pghfdn.org. As always, I'm your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. So I said I'm a crush it. Call me the golden boy, cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. 